SQL Server Integration Services. You might have heard the acronym SSIS quite a bit when you're dealing with SQL Server, and that's what we're going to be covering in this nugget. What exactly is it? Well, SQL Server Integration Services allows us to perform ETL operations. ETL stands for Extract, Load, and Transform. For example, if we have a data source that comes from a flat file and we want to manipulate that data, maybe convert things to upper or lower case, or filter things out, or perhaps look things up in a lookup table and then pour it into a database table, we can do that. What's nice about SSIS is that it's very much wizard driven, it's graphically driven, and it's pretty intuitive. With SSIS, you're going to create tasks. It's just an atomic work unit uh, that does some kind of action. For example, a task might be uh, perform some kind of data flow where you're bringing data from one source to a destination. Or another task might be email somebody. SSIS has ways of handling connections. So if you need to connect to an OLE database, that's fine. Or if you want to connect to a flat file database, that works as well uh, there. You can create variables. These might be user variables, or there's also built-in system variables. So if you need to have a placeholder, maybe for a directory or a file that you want to loop through, you can do that as well. Some of the transformations that are supported by SSIS are performing union all, merge, merge join. You can do fuzzy grouping if you want. You can do percentage sampling, row sampling. You can perform aggregations and all sorts of data mining and data warehousing operations. There's a few built-in command line tools that can help you do things such as execute a package. Think of a package as a container for all of your tasks. So DT exec is going to help you execute packages and there's all sorts of options available to you. You can use DT util to manage your package. Once again, this is from the command prompt. If you're a proficient VB.NET or C Sharp programmer, you can also extend these tasks using your own custom code. To understand SSIS, it's good to understand the architecture. So let's take a look at a quick diagram. What we have here in purple is a unit called a package. Think of the package as a container for a task flow. You'll see in this diagram that we have uh, four different tasks. The first one leads to the second one, and the second one simultaneously leads to two other tasks. And as I mentioned, there's more than just data flow tasks. There's emailing, there's FTPing. But the most common kind of tasks that you'll be dealing with are going to be data flow tasks. And so what I've done here is I've circled this one task, and we now see a blown up version of what a possible task might look like. Okay, so here essentially we have a source. It might be a flat file, it might be a table in a database. So you take that data and you transform it into whatever output you want it to be. And then you take that transform data and send it to the destination. Once again, it could be a flat file, it could be a regular table. You can have more than one transformation within here. For example, if you wanted to convert things to uppercase and then take that output and then uh, sort the results, you can do that. As I mentioned, we have connection managers, we have event handlers that deal, uh, that communicate with our packages, and we also have data sources that get fed into our package, and we also have built-in logging. So you can quickly configure uh, the logging to see what's going on, what kind of errors you're getting, and you can specify what sorts of things you want to log. Right down here is where we have our custom tasks. This is if you're proficient in uh, C Sharp or VB.NET. You'll see up here we have an SSIS service. And so a package can be stored in a .dtsx file or it can be stored in the msdb database itself. If you go to your control panel and then administrative services and then services, if you scroll down, you should see the SSIS service. In fact, I'm going to take you there right now. Just pull this down right here, and we're going to look for SQL Server Integration Services right here. Okay, so you want to make sure that it's started. Mine says that it's automatic, which means whenever I start up my uh, machine, it's automatically going to launch. 
Now that you understand the basic architecture of SSIS, we're going to step through a very simple example. In the later nuggets, we're going to build upon that and do some more complex examples. Let's create a really simple ETL transformation. What we're going to start off with is just a simple flat file, and then we're going to extract the data from that and have it look up a postal code lookup table, and then it's going to put all that data inside of a database table. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is look at what we're starting off with in our database. Okay, so I'm just, uh, I've got my SQL Server Management Studio, and uh, you'll see that I've got this uh, database here. I called mine CBT DB. Really, you can call yours anything you want. And under Tables, I have a table called Postal Codes, which is my lookup table. In fact, if you look at the columns here, we have a primary key, which is the postal code, and then we have the city and state. And you'll see here that we also have this table called contacts. We'll expand this so you can see the columns. We have an ID, last, first, address, postal code, and city and state. Where are we going to get that city and state from? Well, the ETL transformation is going to look up the information in the lookup table to populate it. So in other words, our original data file and that, that flat file is not going to contain the city and state. It's going to be looked up. Let's take a quick look at the contents of our postal codes table. So I'll just do a select star from postal codes. And here you'll see we have a short list here. And the other thing I want you to take a look at is our original flat file, which is right here. So we only have five entries in here, and this is good enough just for testing purposes. So here we have, let me change this to be a five, this first column here is the primary key. Notice I'm separating all the fields by a pipe. Then our second column is the last name. Then we have the first name, then the address, and the postal code. Our ETL transformation is going to start off with this file. Then we go from here to the lookup to find the city and state according to postal code. And then from there, it takes that data and stuffs it into our table. The next thing we want to do is open up our SQL Server Business Intelligence Studio. So you can just go to your Start menu and then go to SQL Server 2008 and then Business Intelligence Development Studio. And here I'll pull this down here so you can see it a little better. You'll get this initial splash screen. And you can always close that right there. And there we have it. We're going to create a new project. So go ahead and do a file new project. This type of project is going to be an integration services project and we'll just call this simple ETL from flat file. We can stick with the default location for this project and uh, I'll stick with the default solution name as well. Keep the uh, create directory for the solution intact there uh, so you can keep your files nicely organized. So I'll hit OK. And now you should see a screen that looks like this. So we have control flow, data flow, event handlers, we have the package explorer. Oh, and down here we have the connection managers. So this is where you can right click on here and you can add a connection to either a flat file or a connection to a database. So let's start off by right clicking on here and we'll say new flat file connection. Now it asks us, what is the manager name? I'll just call this my flat file connection. You have an optional description here. I'm just going to leave mine blank. I am going to browse to the file name. Now later I'll show you how to dynamically determine the file name. Okay, so we'll just say, you know what, this happens to be directly under my C drive. It's called contacts.txt. So we open that up. That's that file that I showed you a minute ago. And uh, we'll just stick with English for the locale, as well as ANSI Latin 1. And the format is going to be delimited. You, other, you have other options right here, but for now, let's stick with that. Stick with all the defaults here. You also have the option of specifying whether the column names are in the first data row. Leave that unchecked since we don't have column names in there. So the next thing, we go to our columns. And here's our actual data. Okay, so the column delimiter 
It automatically detected that it was a vertical bar. If you want to change it to something else, you always can. The row delimiter is um, going to be return. Okay, so that's the CR or, or the LF right there. And then you'll see that we have these default column names right here. We want to give them more meaningful names, otherwise it's going to be really hard to uh, define this ETL. Okay, so we'll go to advanced, and this is where you can define the column. So remember that first column was the ID, the second column was the, uh, we'll just call that last name, the third column was first name, and then we had the address, and then you have postal or zip, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't have to map on to the name of the column in the actual database table uh, because as you go along, uh, along the ETL transformation, you can always change those column names. There's this little button here that says suggest types, and what happens there, if you just uh, click OK there, is that it will go ahead and automatically give suggestions for the data types. For example, if I click on ID, it will automatically try to uh, say that this is a single byte signed integer. You can always change this. For example, I might want to go in here and say, you know what, it's uh, maybe a two byte signed integer or, or something else, okay? For right now, I'll just keep it the way it is. Last name, output column width, it's setting that to 9. If you want to make it larger, you can. Same thing with your first name. And your address, I'm going to make this 25 just in case. And the zip code. Now for the zip code, it says 4 byte sign integer. I actually want to change this to be um, a string type. So here I'll say string dtstr. We want to allow here for string because there might be a zip code that's, you know, five digits followed by a dash, then four digits. Okay, so those are data types, and then you can click on preview, and you can preview the data. You can even specify the number of data rows to skip at the beginning. So we hit OK right there, and we have our connection manager. Then the next thing we want to do is create a connection to our database table. So right click on here once again. We'll say new OLE DB connection. And um, here there are no data connections. Let's go ahead and hit new to create one. Pull this over here. And then we determine the server name. In my case, it's going to be Johnson. In your case, it's whatever the name of your server is. I'm going to use Windows Authentication, but you can always use SQL Server Authentication as well. Then we specify the database name. Well, remember our database in this case was CBT Database. And then I'll just go ahead and I can hit OK or I can say Test Connection and it will tell you whether it can connect or not. Okay, so go ahead and hit OK right there. Next, we want to add a data flow. So we're going to click on the Control Flow tab right here, if it's all not already selected. And here's this little toolbox right here. And under the Control Flow items, let's add a data flow task. So we just use our mouse and drag it over here. Okay, so this is a nice graphical interface. I'll go ahead and uh, double click on this. You can always change the name of this as well. For example, I'm going to call this extract from flat file. Okay, so go ahead and right click on this and go to properties. You just always want to make sure that you're using the correct locale ID. So here it's English, United States. If you're using a different locale, that's fine. So the next thing we want to do is define some data flows within this control flow. So we'll double click on here or you can just click on data flow and under your toolbox again we're going to look at our data flow sources. So our source is a flat file source. Let's drag this to our window here. You can rename this as well. For example I can say extract from contacts file. Okay so now I'm going to double click on this and we can modify any of the properties. Okay, so here's our flat file connection manager.
Thank you.